On this edition of Veterans Health Watch, we'll be focusing on skin and eye protection during the summer months. We'll also learn valuable tips on how to maintain a healthier lifestyle through diet and exercise during the summer months. Welcome to Veterans Health Watch, a program sponsored by the VA Maryland Healthcare System that provides the latest health and benefits information to Maryland's veterans, their family members, and the local community. I'm David Edwards. And I'm Kenya Griffin. Well, David, it's hard to believe that another winter has passed. So in preparation for summer, today we're going to focus on summer nutrition tips, exercise, skin and eye protection. That's right, Kenya. And with the summer comes more outdoor time. And because of that, we're going to be focusing on how to protect our skin and the eyes. And joining us now is Dr. Anthony Caspari, a VA physician and the chairman of dermatology at the University School of Medicine. Dr. Caspari, thank you for joining us today. Uh, David, thank you. Kenya, thank you. It's always nice to chat with you and chat about issues of relevance to veterans' health. Well, thank you. As we're outdoors more in the summer, um, can you tell our viewing audience exactly how much is um, too much time in the sun? What is the, the factor we should be looking at? Yeah, so that's a, a simple yet a complex answer because it's different for everybody. So it depends on your skin type, your eye and your hair color, and your tanning burning history. So if you have blonde hair and blue eyes and very fair skin, it takes very little sun exposure for things to go wrong. That is a sunburn. If you have dark brown or black skin, which would be the other extreme, then it takes a lot longer for you have to, uh, having a problem being out in the sun. And then there's all gr different gradations and colors in between. Other things we also think about are medical history, whether somebody has lupus uh, and they may be sun sensitive, or even more common than that would be medications. Commonly used blood pressure medicines like hydrochlorothiazide or Lasix. Uh, they, these medications, even if you're moderately or dark skinned, you take these medications, they could make you sensitive to the sun. Uh. Another one would be uh, like tetracycline, commonly used to treat acne. It could render you very sensitive to a sunburn. Good information to have, thank you. You're welcome. Also, Dr. Gaspari, during this time of year, we hear more about skin cancer, which I understand is one of the most <coughs> preventable types of cancer, but the numbers of incidences are increasing. Could you discuss that? Sure, that's a great question, Kenya. So it is really a preventable disease, uh, and the prevention starts early in life. Uh, and that's really the best way to present, prevent it, is to protect yourself at an early age throughout your entire life. How do you protect yourself? A regular use of sunscreens, avoiding the direct sun rays in the middle of the day, kind of uh, wide-brimmed hats, protective clothing, and just be aware that the sun can be our friend, but over the long run it could be also our enemy because it could damage the skin and cause an age appearance to the skin and eventually even lead to skin cancer. And of course, occupation is important. Lifeguards, yeah. uh, military that spend a lot of time out in the sun or in Southeast Asia, and they get a lot of sun exposure, they have fair skin. These are all things that we need to think about as to kind of accumulating enough sun damage to the point that you cross the line, that you're growing these rough spots, or even frank skin cancer. Dr. Gasperi, um, in the news media and TV commercials for various sunscreens, we hear a lot about UVA and UVB rays. Can you tell our viewing audience what really is the difference between both and what, what does that mean for us? Sure. Uh, well, first of all, UV stands for ultraviolet. Right. So if you go outside during the day, 
it's bright and light outside because that's visible light. You could see that with your eyes. UV means ultraviolet, and that's invisible to your eyes, but it still strikes the Earth's surface. So UVA is, is a long wave ultraviolet light, and UVB is short wave ultraviolet light. And they're kind of absorbed by different sunscreens. They both could damage the skin. A real simple way to think about it is uh, UVA is the wavelength that causes tanning or darkening of the skin and B burns, meaning UVB uh -huh. is resp more responsible for sunburn. So A tans, B burns. That's a simple way to think about it. It's kind of an oversimplification, but it has a lot of, a lot of truth to it. Well, we want to keep things simple. Yes. How, so how can we protect ourselves? What's the most effective way to protect yes. ourselves from the UV rays? Absolutely. Well, the foolproof way is not to go outside. <laughs> well, that's not acceptable. Right. You need to be outside and enjoy the benefits of the psychological benefits of sunshine. So you wear sunscreens and sunscreens, the technology for sunscreens is improving. Um, years ago, it was uh, simply PABA sunscreens right. and that protected you against B. Now the concept is a, a kind of broad spectrum. It protects you, uh, this, the new sunscreens, the new technology protects you against UVA and UVB. And you think about your days, your younger days at the beach when you'd see a lifeguard with a thick coat of grease over the bridge of the nose and that, that's a physical sunblock, and that blocks all wavelengths of light, visible light, UVA and UVB. And actually, even that has advanced to the point where that kind of sunblock is now what we call a micro emulsion, very tiny particle size. You could put it on your face, and it won't leave the thick, greasy uh -huh. residue on your face. So sunscreen technology uh, has really advanced, and my <coughs> advice to our viewing audience is, again, approach sunscreens from the stand standpoint of broad spectrum, both UVA and UVB. And there's lots of good products out there. Dr. Gaspari, in addition to protecting our skin during the summer months, how do you recommend we protect our eyes? Great question, Kenya. Just like the sunlight in ultraviolet light could damage the skin, it could, could also damage the eyes. So there are protective eyewear that can, can be purchased, uh, it's available, readily available, and basically uh, the lenses in, in the sunglasses uh, would block either UVA or UVB or preferably both. And they're readily available, wrap around glasses so the light doesn't leak in from the top or the sides. And we frequently utilize that in patients uh, that are undergoing certain kinds of therapies or just wanna protect their eyes more readily and they're gonna be spending a lot of time outside. So that's important in terms of the comprehensive approach to protecting your skin and your eyes and even your lips if you go out. There's chapsticks mm -hmm. that uh, contain sunscreens that are readily available and very cosmetically elegant. So you can, you can look good and be safe. Absolutely. Very nice. <laughs> Absolutely. What should our veterans look for um, on their skin as something that should be concerning that they should be reporting to their primary care provider or dermatologist. Right, so the telltale signs of sun damage could be uh, a multitude. So it could start out with wrinkles, increased freckling. Those are the early signs mm -hmm. of sun damage. And then the next step would be multiple freckles and we call them lentigos or liver spots or age spots. Then rough scaly spots on the skin, we call those actinic keratosis, and they are precancerous kind of skin lesions. And those are kind of a danger sign. They're not cancerous in themselves, but it tells us as a dermatologist that the patient has accumulated enough sun damage to the point where they're now developing these lesions. And so when that happens, they need to be under close observation. Then there's a full-blown skin cancers, right. a neoplasm, a growth on the skin, a fleshy growth that could bleed or be red or ulcerate, and, and it doesn't heal. Those are the real telltale signs, particularly on sun-exposed area, meaning the head and neck, the V of the neck, 
the dorsum of the hands and the forearms up to the short sleeves. So I guess when in doubt, always make sure to be vigilant and look for these things and report them to your primary care provider and your dermatologist. Yes, absolutely, I agree. That's excellent advice. Dr. Gaspari, thank you so much for joining us today. I think we really got some wonderful information about how to protect our skin this summer. Well, thank you. It's been my pleasure to chat with both of you. We're going to be going to a break right now, but when we come back, we'll be learning about healthy summer eating. So come back. Scheduling appointments for veterans at the VA Maryland Healthcare System is now easier with the addition of our new appointment center. If you're enrolled in the VA and need to schedule, change, or cancel a clinic appointment, call the appointment center at 1-800-463-6295, extension 7333, Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. You can also cancel or confirm appointments by calling our 24-hour automated appointment line at 1-800-463-6295, extension 7395. Welcome back to Veterans Health Watch. Joining us now is Kevin Grodnitsky, the MOVE coordinator and a registered dietitian with the VA Maryland Healthcare System. Kevin, thanks for joining us. My pleasure, thanks for having me. Kevin, now that we're preparing for summer, there's many of us and many in our viewing audience that probably put on a few pounds during the winter and now are working to try to start some dieting to get ready for the summer months. While we're doing this, what are some of the factors that we should be addressing when starting a diet and looking to, to lose weight? That's a great question. I think the main thing that people want to consider is maybe a, avoiding the word diet or avoiding the, the diet mentality. Um, I like to encourage our veterans, clients to think of a 12-month cycle mm. when you're thinking about getting healthy, creating a lifestyle change program. So certainly people can start or engage in a weight management program any time of the year, but I, I would encourage people to think about how am I going to maintain this 12 months out of the year? How am I going to create strategies and a lifestyle that I can maintain and routines that I can maintain? So sure, people can start now, try to lose weight, attempt to change their lifestyle, but the goal now is how do I maintain this throughout all four seasons? Good point. Well, Kevin, this, since we are talking about summertime, sure. I know the summer offers great opportunities for many mm -hmm. seasonal fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking for the most nutritional value, mm -hmm. where should you go in a court with those fruits and vegetables? So what I like to talk about with fruits and vegetables is they're the superfoods in the nutrition world. So I actually would say, sure, different fruits and vegetables have different micronutrient content values. However, all fruit and vegetables provide nutrition. So what I tell people, especially if they're trying to make changes towards healthier eating, pick your favorites and dig in. Find the fruits and vegetables that you like. You know, go for varieties to so the dark leafy greens, if you like collards or spinach or chard, broccoli. Find the ones that you like, try to include those in your diet more often. But I think when you're trying to make changes, you start with what are the fruits and veggies I like which ones do I have access to? And they may be the ones that are in season because they're going to taste better. And, uh, and start from there. When starting a diet, actually, again, when starting a lifestyle change program, I, I encourage people, make this fun, make this healthy, make it exciting. You can do that by picking the healthy foods you like. Well, Kevin, that leads me to my next question. I understand that the VA Maryland Healthcare System uses the recommended Choose My Plate program for healthy eating. Can you describe this nutritional approach to healthy eating? Absolutely. So the My Plate, and I have an example of the My Plate right here, we've moved away from My Pyramid, which for some they felt it was a little bit confusing. Right. Um, the My Plate is a simple um, visual demonstration of how you could conceptually set up your plate. The one way I like to talk about it is 50% of your plate could be fruits and vegetables. If half of your plate is fruits and vegetables, again, fruits and vegetables are the superfoods, high in nutrition, low in calories. Pound for pound fruits and vegetables are the lowest calories of any food. So when you're setting up a lunch or dinner plate, how can you make half of your meal fruits and vegetables or half of your plate fruits and vegetables? Now some people don't think about fruits going on a lunch or dinner plate. So you could have fruit as an appetizer or a dessert. Then a little less than a quarter of your plate is going to be the protein foods. I have a couple examples here. We've got fish. Um, you've got fish, and then if you're looking at animal proteins, you want leaner. So skinless chicken, uh, lean meats, cut off the visible fat, plant proteins, nuts or nut butters like peanut butter or almond butter, soy products, uh, beans, peas, lentils, those are great choices as well. Uh, grains or starchy vegetables would go a little bit greater than a quarter of your plate. 
And you know, I've got an option here of you know, standard white bread. You know, we encourage veterans and patients alike to choose whole grains, 100% whole grain products. You know, brown rice over white rice, whole wheat pasta over white pasta. Um, and then they're encouraging three servings of dairy or calcium-rich foods a day. Is that the dessert section? <laughs> well, <laughs> it could it's be. a little small. <laughs> so, you know, one way to do dessert, if I'm having a craving for ice cream and I right. do like a, a, a fruit-flavored yogurt, it tends to, it tends to hit the spot. Um, some people are lactose intolerant. There are lactose-free products. There are soy products as well. Uh, or increase your calcium-rich plant foods as well. Excellent. This is a great way to look at healthy eating. Thank you. No problem. It's much easier to understand than the pyramid. It very pyramid can be confusing, yes. absolutely. So with the summer comes vacation, mm -hmm. weddings, right. extra parties. That's right. So how can you maintain that healthy lifestyle while vacationing or, or participating in these extracurricular activities in the summer? So good question. I just went to the beach. I was at Ocean City this past weekend. And it's certainly more challenging when you're traveling in the summertime. I like to use the two-thirds rule. Two-thirds of my day is healthy and as normal. So we go shopping for breakfast, lunch, snacks. We'll pack our foods for the beach or we're going out for a few hours or more. And then we'll go out and we'll have a nice dinner. But if I can make two-thirds of my day as part of my normal routine and go shopping where I go, uh, I tend to stay healthier. Good. So that's one tip. Outstanding. Well, Kevin, with the summer, we also are experiencing the temperatures and heat. Mm -hmm. And obviously, in the, we have a whole issue of hydration mm -hmm. and, and what we should be drinking. Can you address that issue for our viewing audience? Absolutely. Human body is 60% water. Perfect fluid replacement is going to be water. And I, there's one brand there, but any type of water is fine. You know, essentially, when it's hotter or you're exercising in the heat, your body is sweating to cool itself. As you sweat, um, water evaporates from the skin as well. You're going to lose fluid. So your best fluid replacement is going to be water. What I like to tell clients, patients, is don't drink your calories. Right. If you're drinking your calories and you're trying to manage your weight, it, your body can convert liquid sugar into fat, body fat mm. with no problem. That's depressing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so now you have some other options here. Um, first of all, we want to keep an eye on portions. You know, you've got some products here that can pack a quite amount of, of calories and sugar. You've got, here's a gulp here. You've got a big gulp. When I was a kid, this was the largest thing I had ever seen. Now they have a double gulp. And often in many of these beverages, there's multiple servings. So when you're looking for a beverage, look at the serving size. It generally isn't the whole bottle. This vitamin water is not one serving. It's actually four servings. Wow. But back to hydration, you know, if you're exercising in the summer, something to keep an eye on as well, you're going to be sweating more. If you're doing vigorous or intense exercise for more than an hour, you could consider a fluid and an electrolyte replacement drink, such as Gatorade. Um, but for most people, water is a perfect fluid replacement. Now you've got Gatorade and you've got G2. Gatorade, this is going to have 13 or 14 teaspoons of sugar per bottle. Wow. G2 is about five teaspoons of sugar. So if you're going to choose a sports drink, choose the lower calorie option. Kevin, can you tell us quickly what programs do our, does the VA Maryland healthcare system offer to help our veterans eat healthy and who can they contact for more information? So we have registered dietitians across the state of Maryland at all of the sites available to veterans. If you're interested in learning how to eat healthier or you have a chronic disease and you think nutrition may help, a registered dietitian would be a great place to start. You can call the call center and they can direct you about how to make an appointment or you can check with your local clinic, check with your doc, clerk, nurse, and say, I'm interested in seeing a dietitian. We have some other programs like the MOVE program, which is a weight management program. Again, you can check with your local clinic um, or call the call center. And there's other programs as, as well as the diabetes, the lipid clinic. So we have a lot of resources to help our veterans. Outstanding. This is great information as we prepare for the summer. summer. We thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks again. Thank you, Kevin. We're going to go to a break right now, but when we come back, we're going to be talking about exercise and preparation for the summer. So stay tuned. A lot of women veterans don't realize that the VA is here to take care of them. They served and they deserve the best health care that there is. The Women Veterans Program has been redesigned to meet the needs of the women veterans. Female veterans receive just as good a care as men because they're focused more on us now. 
We want them to come here, we want them to feel welcomed, and we want them to know that we are capable and willing to take care of them. Welcome back to Veterans Health Watch. For today's show, we've been talking about skin care and healthy eating. Now we're going to be talking about exercise and how to use exercise to get us in shape for the summer. And joining us is Greg Steinbrenner, an exercise physiologist and research coordinator for the Geriatric Research Education Clinical Center at the Baltimore VA Medical Center. Greg, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me, David. Well, Greg, as I mentioned, um, we're getting ready for the summer. We're in the summer months now. Everybody's starting to want to get outside and work in the garden. How would you recommend that we start getting out and getting physical and getting active? Well, there's the challenge is, is uh, finding the time to do it. And there are a couple ways that you can approach uh, being physically active. There are lifestyle physical activities. These are things that you can do like housework, gardening, uh, using the stairs when you're at the Baltimore uh, VA Medical Center. Uh, parking your car a little further away when you're at the grocery store. And then there are things like programmed physical activity, things you know as exercise. Those are things like swimming, riding a bike, jogging, doing group exercise classes, playing sports. So there's, a, there's a multiple ways that you can be physically active. Well, Greg, during the summer, we know it can get really hot, especially in Maryland. We had a few record-breaking days last summer. How do you recommend people stay safe while exercising during the summer? Well, you've got to consider the weather first because it is going to be hot. So you should really try and exercise earlier in the day or later in the day when the temperature is not going to be as hot. Uh, you should also consider using some sunscreen to prevent burning. It was mentioned earlier in the show that you want to make sure you stay adequately hydrated and if you're doing long periods of exercise make sure that you you might want to consider using uh, an electrolyte drink like Gatorade. Uh, you want to wear loose fitting clothing, light color, colored clothing that uh, is going to allow you to sweat better and keep you cooler. And you also want to be aware of the signs and symptoms of heat exhaustion. Things like dizziness, rapid heartbeat, difficulty breathing, profuse sweating, because those can lead to additional problems and you should uh, try and find a place that's shaded or even go inside to an air-conditioned environment to cool off. Well, Greg, is there any, are there any tips that you can recommend to um, our veterans and the viewing audience today who are interested in starting an exercise routine this summer? Definitely. There's a lot of things that you can do uh, to start an exercise routine. Um, walking is probably one of the best things that you can do. Uh, the federal government, we came out with recommendations a few years ago recommending 150 minutes of aerobic exercise and walking being the best example. You can break that up however you want. It could be three days a week for 50 minutes, five days a week for 30 minutes. So it allows you to individualize your workout. We also follow something called the FIT principle, which is a way to develop an exercise plan. The F stands for frequency, basically asking how many days a week do you plan to do the exercise. I would be intensity. How are you going to evaluate how hard you do it? That could be based on if you're doing strength training, the number uh, of repetitions, the sets, or the amount of weight you're doing, uh, or taking your heart rate when you're going for a jog. Uh, t the first T stands for time. How long are you going to do the exercise for? Again, you can vary that depending on your schedule. And the last T is what are you going to do? Type. So again, you want to consider aerobic strength training and uh, st stretching as part of a, a, a comprehensive exercise routine. Well, Greg, I understand you have a few, de a few things you can demonstrate for us as far as a, a few exercises we can do in our own homes to get started. The thing about exercise is, is you don't need a gym membership. You don't need sophisticated equipment. There's a lot of things you can do right at home. Uh, I brought some things with me today. Uh, a soup can is a really nice tool that you can use you know, especially if you haven't done a lot of exercise and you're really just getting started, um, it's something you can do. You can do something simple like a bicep curl, which is just curling your arm with your elbow, like this. You can also do ex a, a, an overhead extension where you're just basically extending your ar arm up like this, which helps to work the back of the arm. Another, another great tool that you can use is if you have a, a, a soda bottle or a milk carton, you can fill it up with sand, you can fill it up with rocks. This is actually kitty litter. Um, <laughs> right. And it makes a great 
uh, it makes a great dumbbell. And again, you can do these same type of exercises. Another thing you can do is just lifting the, the, the bottle up over your head like this, which allows you to um, strengthen your shoulder muscles. You can also do exer a simple exercise using your own body weight, which is just to stand up without using your hands. And you do that multiple times. You just stand up, sit back down again, just like this. And it'll help strengthen the leg muscles. Another leg exercise that you can do sitting in a chair is a leg extension. And it's just straightening your leg up while you're sitting down. And then it, that works the front muscles in the front part of the leg. And if you want to work the front back part, you can actually stand up and just do a leg curl where you curl the back of your leg muscles. So those are some e simple exercises that you can do right at home. And you, again, you don't need to go out and buy an expensive gym set. So another thing you can use is called a uh, TheraBand or a stretch band can be used as a nice piece of resistance. And there are different exercises that you can do, some of which I showed. You can do the bicep curl and the tricep curl. You can also uh, tie the band around your leg use that when you're doing doing some of these exercises actually step on it just like that to do a leg curl so these are just some of the exercises you can do so Greg well, you're telling us that we have no excuses really <laughs> yeah, exactly. have no excuses well are there any safety issues that our veteran patients and the viewing audience should consider when starting an exercise routine or, or doing any of these exercises definitely uh, if you haven't, if they're not currently engaged in exercise, first they should probably talk to the primary care physician to discuss any maybe recommendations or even restrictions they should consider prior to beginning a program. They should also be aware of signs and symptoms of when to stop exercising. Your body will tell you whenever it's time to stop exercising typically, uh, or, or if you're overdoing it. Things like difficulty breathing, unusual pains, nausea, um, cramping. Those are usually signs that uh, you're, you know, you're maybe overdoing it or something's wrong. If they don't go away when you stop, then you probably need to uh, seek some medical attention. So Greg, I know some of our veterans will have more questions after seeing this show. So how could they learn more information about the programs you offer? It was mentioned earlier that there's the MOVE program, which is a weight loss program. It's a multidisciplinary program that includes nutrition, behavior change, and, and also exercise. We teach veterans how to exercise um, there's, there's programs at the various sites and you can uh, call the uh, call center to find out if there's a program at a location near you. There's also, if you're in the Baltimore area, the GREC, which is my department, we do various uh, exercise and weight loss programs and you can call 410-605-7179 uh, is our recruitment line and we're always looking for volunteers to help out and, and, and it's an opportunity to work towards exercise and weight loss. Good stuff. Yeah, as Kenya said, we have no excuse yeah. now. No excuse. Greg, Let's thank you going. so much for joining us today. This thank has you been for a, a wonderful me. information to share with the viewing audience. Thank you. That wraps up today's show. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Veterans Health Watch. If you have questions about today's show, we'd like to make suggestions for future topics, please contact us at 1 800 463 6295, extension 7101 or visit us on the internet at maryland.va.gov. You can also follow us on Facebook or Twitter. And remember, if you are a veteran or you know a veteran who is not using the VA Maryland healthcare system, please come by to see us. You could also visit us on the web or call us. We'd love to serve you. The VA Maryland healthcare system is a great system. It's not your grandfather's VA. We are a progressive and dynamic healthcare system. And it's our mission to provide the highest quality healthcare to our veteran heroes. Great programs, great technology, great staff. And it's just touching to see how everybody just come together as one. We do what we can to see that they get the best service. It's a family. 
nobody takes better care of you than family.